To be classified as a serial killer, a person must murder three or more people over more than a month. Psychological gratification is the usual motive for serial killing, and many murders involve sexual contact with the victim, both when they are dead and alive. The motive of serial killing can include anger, thrill-seeking, financial gain, and attention-seeking. The victims will have something in common, usually a demographic profile or appearance, gender, or race. Serial killing usually has a pattern of behavior that law enforcement will focus on, otherwise known as their MO or modus operandi. Today, we are going to dive in to one of the most well-known serial killers in American history, Ted Bundy. Theodore Ted Robert Bundy was a law student, psychopath, husband, rapist, son, necrophiliac, brother, sociopath, father, and serial killer. Born on November 24th, 1946 to Eleanor Louise Cowell at 22, Ted Bundy's mother was unwed. It is unknown who his biological father was. However, it has been suspected that his grandfather was his true biological father. Shortly after his birth, his mother moved him, herself and Ted back into her parents' home in Philadelphia. The Cowells were religious people and were humiliated by having an illegitimate grandchild. Ted's grandparents created a story about adopting Ted and that his mother was really his older sister. After living alive for many years, Eleanor moved herself and Ted to Tacoma, Washington. This is where she met Johnny Bundy, who would soon be Ted's stepfather. Eleanor and Johnny married in 1951 and had a combined total of five children. Ted took his stepfather's name, but Ted and Johnny never became close, as Ted thought Johnny was uneducated and too working class for his liking. It was during his teenage years that a darker side began to emerge. Even at a young age, Ted had a fascination with knives. Yet little attention was paid to this because of his good looks and captivating demeanor. As Bundy matured, he became a trim man, about six feet tall, with wavy brown hair, piercing eyes, and symmetrical features. Many people commented on not only his intelligence, but also his good looks. After graduating from high school in Tacoma, Washington in 1965, Bundy attended multiple colleges and universities, including the University of Puget Sound, the University of Utah, Temple University, and the University of Washington. While Bundy attended the University of Washington, he studied and majored in psychology. He also volunteered for the crisis hotline, working as a counselor for people that were considering suicide. It was while he was at the University of Washington that Bundy met and fell in love with a fellow student, Stephanie Brooks. When she broke off the relationship, Bundy was devastated. And the similarities between Stephanie and Bundy's future victims had many of the same physical characteristics. While Bundy was in college in 1972, he graduated from Washington, went to start law school at Temple University, and then transferred to the University of Utah. He did not graduate with a law degree, but completed his first year. Ted Bundy seemed to be the perfect man on his way to success. However, there was a level of deviance that America would never forget. Bundy's murder spanned across four states, and he reportedly killed over 30 women. A renowned killer in the 1970s with a distinct MO. He typically targeted women in their late teens and early 20s with long brown hair parted down the middle. Bundy drove a VW bug, which allowed him to present as a free spirit. Bundy also preyed on women's vulnerabilities and their desire to help, 
allowing him to isolate and easily abduct these women without anyone noticing. He would often fake a broken arm, ankle, and even a low IQ. Bundy began his attacks in Washington State. Killers often hunt in areas that they feel the most comfortable, and Bundy was no different. The first woman that Bundy attacked survived. Her name was Karen Sparks. The attack happened on January 4th, 1974, when Ted Bundy snuck into her bedroom and beat her with a metal rod that was part of her bed frame. He violently sexually assaulted her with the rod during the attack, Karen's roommate was talking in her sleep, and that is what drove Bundy to leave without killing her. Sparks was in a coma for 10 days, and she has no recollection of the event. An interview with Karen Sparks, done in the following YouTube video, helps to depict her recollection of the events. Linda Ann Healy was Ted Bundy's first murder victim. She was 21 at the time of her death on February 1st, 1974. Bundy abducted Linda Ann from the main campus of the University of Washington. She was known to provide the community with the weekly ski report on the radio. On her way to do the morning report, he abducted and strangled her. Then, a little over a month later, Donna Mason was kidnapped and murdered at the age of 19 on March 12, 1974. Her body was never recovered. In a confession to the FBI in 1989, Bundy let them know he disposed of her body in the Cascade Mountains, although he also admitted to cremating her skull at his girlfriend's residence. In April of 1974, Bundy would complete his final murder in the state of Washington with Suzanne Rencourt. Almost exactly one month after the death of Donna Mason, Bundy killed 18-year-old Susan Rancourt on April 17, 1974. Bundy abducted Susan when she was on her way to receive her clothing from the community laundry room. Although her clothing remained in the dryer, she was never seen alive again. Brenda Carol Ball was a 22-year-old who was murdered on June 1, 1974. Bundy abducted Ball after she left the Flame Tavern at Dive Bar a little after 2 a.m. She was last seen talking to a brown-haired man with his arm in a sling. Acting injured and requesting help from unsuspecting women was a common M.O. of Bundy's. He did this to gain their sympathy so that he could subdue them and put them into his car. Bundy removed the passenger seat of his VW Buck as it was easier to hide the women from unsuspecting possible bystanders. This is the alley where Ted Bundy abducted Georgiana Hawkins. It is an area called Greek Row in the University District of Seattle. Georgina was taken in the early hours of June 11, 1974. She had just left the Beta Theta Pi house after visiting her boyfriend. She was walking back to her sorority house, the Kappa Alpha Theta house, which was only 350 feet away. This is when Bundy knocked her unconscious, drug her to his car, drove her to a secluded area where he undressed, raped, and strangled her to death with a piece of rope. On a beautiful summer day at Lake Sammamish, Bundy abducted Janice Ann Ott, age 23, and Denise Newsonlin, 19. Witnesses described a handsome man who called himself Ted. Police were beginning to identify Bundy's strategy of luring women by wearing his arm in a sling and asking for help. He wanted the girls to help him with his sailboat. This was the last time the girls would be seen alive. Their bodies were discovered by hunters in the woods. At the time of these murders, Bundy had a job as an emergency services department in Olympia, Washington. 
which he left as he planned ahead toward Salt Lake City to continue studying law at the University of Utah Law School. However, he would make one stop along the way. Bundy then traveled from Washington State to Oregon, where he abducted and killed his fifth murder victim, Roberta Kathy Parks, at the age of 20, from Washington State University around 11 p.m. Bundy later claimed that he raped and killed her at Taylor Mountain, more than 25 miles southeast of Seattle. Bundy continued towards Utah, where he committed six murders over seven months. Nancy Wilcox went missing on October 2nd, 1974, when she was only 16. The Utah Department of Safety reported that she was last seen near her home in a yellow Volkswagen Beetle driven by an unidentified man. A yellow Beetle was the known car that Ten Buddy drove. Bundy confessed to killing her shortly before his execution in 1989, but said that he did not know the body's exact location. Because Wilcox's body was not recovered, her case is still unsolved. On October 18, 1974, Bundy abducted, raped, and strangled Melissa Smith at the age of 17 from Midville, Utah. She was the daughter of the police chief and a very careful girl. On the night of the 18th, Melissa planned to attend a slumber party. She walked to the local pizza restaurant to comfort a friend who had just had a fight with her boyfriend. She never made it home. Melissa was found battered and nude nine days later. Her head had been severely beaten with perhaps a crowbar and her body had been battered before death. She had been strangled, raped, and sodomized. Bundy confessed to her murder before his execution. On Halloween 1974, Bundy kidnapped, raped, and murdered Laura Amy, age 17, from Lehigh, Utah. She had left a Halloween party to get cigarettes, and at some point, she came into contact with Bundy. He raped, bludgeoned, and strangled her before dumping her body that would not be found until Thanksgiving Day in a mountainous area. Not all of the women that came into contact with Bundy died. Bundy attempted to abduct Carol DeRoche, age 18, from the Fashion Place Mall in Murray, Utah. Bundy claimed to be a police officer investigating a break-in of her vehicle. Roche admitted she felt at ease when Bundy flashed his badge. He got her into his car and she narrowly escaped. By the side of the road, Bundy tried to bludgeon her into submission when she escaped and was able to leap into a passing vehicle when, where she still had on Bundy's handcuffs. Unbeknownst to her, Bundy foiled in one murder plot went later that night in a nearby high school where he made 17-year-old Deborah Kent his next victim. Carol's survival on November 8, 1974 would later go on to help prosecute Bundy as a critical witness. The luckiest day of Carol's life was the worst day for Deborah Kent. On November 8, 1974, Deborah Kent from Salt Lake City disappeared when she was only 17. She vanished after leaving her parents' home to pick up her brother from the local ice skating rink. Her body was never found, despite Bundy revealing her supposed grisly location. The final murder that Ted Bundy committed in Utah was Susan Curtis at age 15. She was kidnapped from the Brigham Young University campus where she was attending a youth conference on June 27, 1975. Bundy admitted to murdering her in his final confessions before his execution. She is still considered a missing person, as her remains have never been found. After the murder of Susan Curtis, Bundy ventured towards Colorado, where he would commit five terrifying murders. 
On January 12, 1975, Ted Bundy killed Carolyn Campbell, a 23-year-old nurse from Michigan. She was on vacation with her fiancé in Snowmass Village when she crossed paths with Ted Bundy. This picturesque location is one of the most well-known murders of Bundy's. Campbell disappeared after leaving the lobby alone, and her nude body was found a month later by the side of the road just outside of town. She had been beaten to death. On August 16, 1975, Bundy was apprehended. Highway Patrol Sergeant Bob Hayward stopped the VW bug that had been loitering outside of a residence. Hayward arrested the shaggy-haired driver after finding a ski mask, a crowbar, an ice pick, and handcuffs in the car. But charges for evading police were not enough to keep him detained for long, and Bundy was soon released. Bundy then traveled the 99 miles from Snowmass to Vail, Colorado, where on March 15, 1975, 26-year-old ski instructor Julie Cunningham vanished early in the evening when she was on her way to meet a friend at a local bar. Bundy claimed that he used crutches and asked Julie to assist him with carrying his ski boots to his car, which was parked nearby. According to Bundy, when Julie agreed to help, he made small talk with her. As she bent down to place his boots in the car, he knocked her unconscious with a crowbar. Although he was never charged with her murder, Bundy confessed to murdering her. He claimed to have raped and strangled her and then disposed of her body in Rifle, Colorado. On April 6, 1975, Denise Overson rode a bike from her home in Grand Junction and the next day, only the bike was found. She was never seen again. In 1989, days before his execution, Ted Bundy told investigators that he had disposed of her body in a river in Grand Junction, Colorado, yet the body was never found. Melanie Suze Cooley, a high school senior, was last seen hitchhiking on April 15, 1975, in Netherland, Colorado. Her body was found on May 2nd, 1975 in Coal Creek Canyon in Jefferson County, just outside of Denver, Colorado. She had been bludgeoned on the back of her head with a large rock. Her hands had been tied and a dirty pillowcase had been left twisted around her neck. Shelly Robertson, age 23, was never seen again after her interaction with Bundy. She graduated from Arvada High School in Colorado in 1969, returning to Colorado and attending Red Rocks Community College where she studied Spanish. Seven weeks after starting school, her body was found in a mine shaft near Georgetown, Colorado. When Bundy was asked about Shelley Robertson, he replied, I don't wanna talk about her. Ted Bundy left Colorado and landed in Idaho, where in May of 1975, Lynette Culver, at the age of 12, was his current youngest victim. She was abducted on her way home from lunch at her middle school. Family spent years searching for her and waiting for closure. Finally, Bundy confessed to kidnapping and drowning her in a bathtub. Bundy later admitted that he discarded her body in the Snake River. Her remains have never been found. Bundy was captured and taken to Utah on March 1st, 1976, where he had a five-day trial, during which he waived his rights to be heard by a jury, and Bundy was found guilty of aggravated kidnapping of Carol DeRoche, the 18-year-old he tried to take from the mall. He was sentenced to one to 15 years in prison. After he was found guilty in Utah, Bundy was sent to Colorado to be tried for the murder of Carolyn Campbell, the 23-year-old nurse from Michigan. While in Colorado, Bundy did not escape once, but twice. The first time was on June 7, 1977, when Bundy was allowed to use the library at the Aspen Pitkin County Courthouse, where Bundy leaped out the second floor window. 
he was freed for six days. After he was captured and brought back to the Aspen Courthouse, he would escape yet again. On December 30th, 1977, Bundy escaped jail in Aspen, Colorado again. He had filed a motion to change the venue because Aspen was one of the most liberal towns in the state and he thought he was more likely to get a lighter sentence. The judge decided instead to move the child to Colorado Springs. Because Bundy did not want to be tried in Colorado Springs, a more conservative town, he escaped the prison. It was discovered that a metal plate directly above the light fixture in his cell had been tampered with, and that is how he made his escape. Bundy was well on his way to Florida when he was discovered missing. Two weeks after his escape from the Aspen prison, Bundy was on the run from law enforcement. He traveled from Colorado to Chicago, then took a train to Ann Arbor, Michigan, where he then drove a stolen, stolen car to Atlanta, where he would finally board a bus headed towards Tallahassee, Florida, where he would begin the last of his murders. It has always bewildered law enforcement why Bundy chose Florida of all states as it had the highest rate of convicting and sentencing criminals to death. While in Tallahassee, Bundy stayed in a rooming house, like a modern day hostel that was only a block from the Florida State University campus. Bundy used the name of Chris Hagen and hung around campus and joined in on local activities. Then, on January 15, 1978, at 3 a.m., only a few days after Bundy had arrived in Tallahassee, he committed the most gruesome murder. He broke into the Chi Omega sorority house at Florida State and sexually assaulted and murdered two women, Margaret Bozeman and Lisa Levy, who were both beaten severely and strangled to death. Bundy then made his way down the sorority hall and attacked Kathy Kleiner and her roommate, Karen Chandler, in their rooms. Both of these women would survive. Shortly after the Chi Omega attack, Bundy broke into an apartment of Cheryl Thompson, another student of, at FSU, and attacked her. Her roommates, who lived on the other side of the wall, Debbie and Nancy heard the noises and called Thompson's apartment, but she didn't answer, so they called the police. Bundy escaped before authorities arrived. But Thompson also survived the attack due to the heroic actions of her roommates. The last person that Ted Bundy was known to have killed was Kimberly Leach. She was only 12 years old. On February 9th, 1978, Bundy kidnapped Leach around her school in Lake City, Florida. Kimberly is reported to have got, forgotten her purse, and when she went back to retrieve it, she did not know it at the time, but she was being stalked by a serial killer. She was never seen again. Two months later, her body was found 37 miles away. Ted Bundy's reign of terror was finally coming to an end after he was pulled over for his headlights being off at 1.30 a.m. Unwilling to give his identity right away, the man is eventually revealed to be the wanted by the FBI, Ted Bundy. In July of 1978, Bundy was indicated for the murders of Margaret Bowman, Lisa Lovely, and the attempted murder Cheryl Thompson, Kathy Kleiner, and Karen Chandler. Bundy was being tried and held in Florida, and in May 1979, Bundy rejected a plea deal that would allow him to avoid the death penalty if he admitted to murdering Bowman, Levy, and Leach. His first trial was set for June 25, 1979, in Miami, Florida. 
the court case was focused on convicting him for the brutal attacks on the Chi Omega sorority girls. Almost one month later, he was found guilty of murdering Levy Bowman, the attempted murder of Kleiner, Chandler, and Thompson. One week later, he was sentenced to death. The second trial was to take place in January 1980 in Orlando, Florida, where Bundy was to be tried for the murder of Kimberly Leach. And in February of 1980, Bundy was also found guilty of murder and kidnapping and was sentenced to death. Then in July of 1986, after Florida Governor Bob Grayman signed two death warrants for the Chi Omega case, the 11th Circuit Court signed a permanent stay of execution 15 minutes before Bundy was scheduled to be executed to determine his mental capacity during the 1980 trial. 13 months later, a district court ruled that Bundy was fully coherent for the trial, calling him a diabolical genius for good measure. Over the next several days, Bundy confessed to various law enforcement agencies. He told the FBI that he had killed more than 30 people in California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and Florida between 1973 and 1978. And on January 24th, 1989, at the Florida State Penitentiary, Bundy was strapped into an electric chair named Old Sparky and at 7 a.m., after making the statement, give my love to my family and friends, the notorious killer was declared dead at 7.16, and cheers were heard everywhere. I will leave you now with the chilling words of Ted Bundy when he stated, you feel the last bit of breath leaving their body. You're looking into their eyes person in this situation is God.